children of late who lived in the city a sorrowful ditty his wife was too great with me the apprentice boy but a swinging young spark at a wench in the dark now this my day knew and therefore stout johnny yes therefore stout johnny must tickle her too it happened one day my mistress came to me no question she knew me to be any way a lad for her turn where's your master she cried with a friend i replied she then void of shame said I fear a woeful disaster, the wrath of me, master. If once he should hear I played with your lute, he would lick my heart. You're a fool, she replied. chance he then being near us did soon overhear us and straight did advance with fury and rage like a fellow horn man
lad, he fell on me, the lad, my shoulders he paid. Cause I in his pasture, yes, I in his pasture, a trespass had made. Oh, what hast thou done? So sad a aberration was ne'er in the nation born mad. I shall run without all dispute. Oh, a villain me, I will not let you free, but bring you to shame. Because you have wronged me, because you have wronged me, and played with your dame. That was fantastic, guys. I love that performance. We're really grateful that you came down from UC Santa Barbara to share the work of the Broadside Ballad Archive. If each of you could just introduce yourselves quickly, I'm going to ask, uh, ask you a few questions about the performance and the project of the archive. Um, hi, my name is Katherine Saxon. Um, I'm a UCSB alum, and I used to sing Broadside Ballads when I first came to UCSB, um, and I have a PhD in music composition. Hi, I'm Johan Velasquez, also an alumni of UCSB. I have a BA in music composition. I should do that. Uh, I'm Eric Bell. I am a PhD candidate in music theory at UCSB, and I'm also managing the singing team for the English Broadside Ballad Archive. Hi, my name is Helena Harlow. I actually have a BA in biology, but I play a bard in the Society for Creative Anachronism, and I recently got hired part-time onto the English Broadside Ballad Archive. I'm Abe Pressman. I'm a chemical engineering PhD candidate at UC Santa Barbara, and this is actually my first time singing with these guys in this setting. <laughs> I'm Patty Farmerton, and my goal is to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> One ballad at a time. <laughs> One ballad at a time. Um, I'm director of the English Broadside Ballad Archive, um, and a ballad is a sheet on which are printed uh, texts of songs, the tune title or titles to which could be sung, and then it's illustrated. So it's this multimedia um, um, artifact. And um, Julia, do you want to introduce, your, have you already introduced your, yourself? I'm Julia Lupton. I'm co-director of the UCI Shakespeare Center and the faculty director of Illuminations, the Chancellor's Arts and Culture Initiative, which has made possible this event. And it's just wonderful that we have been able to collaborate with Julia because the very core and essence of EBBA, the English Broadside Ballad Archive, is collaboration. And we, um, very early on I realized we had to reach out to expertise in many, many different fields in order to make a, a broadside ballad come alive because they weren't just things that sat in libraries back in the period. They were handed around, pasted up on walls, um, uh, sung in alehouses together as a group. Um, some of the times they were cut out and, and pasted together by collectors. Uh, then they were often used uh, for toilet paper or pie lining <laughs> or uh, they were disposable. They were the cheapest form of ephemera in the period. They were also the most dominant. So if you think that Shakespeare, which of course we're most interested in tonight in the performance of Romeo and Juliet, is you know the canonical figure that everybody was reading. He, wa he wasn't. Many people went to the theater, but the most common 
form of literature um, or performance actually in the period was the ballad. And it could be performed in all sorts of different ways. And that's why the opportunity to do a jig performance um, sees my imagination because I've been constantly noticing in EBBA as we archive more and more ballads that there are a lot of jig ballads. So what is a jig? So a jig, you know, at one level people don't know um, because a jig could be a song, um, it could be a, a dance, um, it could take um, in, in many different forms depending on I think the available materials. But in the, in, the, in, in the way it adapted in the period after a performance, which became pretty concrete around the 1590s, it was a little dramatic show. And we have, um, in which there was definitely singing um, in a dialogue form, and um, if, if available, uh, musical instruments and possibly dance. We know of some jigs that uh, um, Thomas Platter mentions a jig that's just dance. So we know, and, and then we know that there, there were many, many, most often, in fact, lascivious, lewd, um, and just downright raunchy. Um, and they would cause a bit of a raucous in the audience, which is why authorities tried to close them down in the Westminster area in 1612. Um, because people were getting into the theaters just to see the jigs and not the plays uh, and trying to avoid the admission. So the great thing about a jig, like all aspects of a ballad, is it can be used in any way that the consumer or the distributor wants to use it. It's in a highly malleable form. And so somebody may be only admiring the illustrations or they may be only listening to the tune or they may, be, um, they may be pulling out a fiddle to, to play along or dancing, because many of, the, many of the tunes are from country dances and court dances too. And so they actually appeal to all levels of society, even though the high put them down as part of the attempt to sort of establish uh, national literature, they would put down them as, um, you know, just for the masses, but um, they were for the masses, meaning high and low. Well, you mentioned the fiddle, and Johan played the fiddle very nicely in the performance just now. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you adapt the words to the tune? What the hell that worked, Eric, in terms of the rehearsals? And maybe we could get a little demonstration of that from Helena and from Johan? This is a great question, because when we read a ballad and it's to the tune of, we don't think, and when we hear the tune, we don't think about any association, but the problematic of putting them together is actually a really high problematic. So I, maybe Eric could talk about that. This one in general fit pretty well. There were a couple decorative spots that seemed excessive, say, is a carmen of late who lived in the city, a sorrowful ditty, his wife was too great. That's four notes on one syllable. It's a little bit excessive sometimes. And you just have to ride that out. But oftentimes the case with, for the most part, this ballad pretty closely fit the tune or pretty comfortably fit the tune. Where it gets a little bit difficult or in very few places where whoever was writing this didn't include enough syllables or put too many syllables in. Mm -hmm. In my second to last stanza, there's this one place where there just aren't enough syllables. The original text said, um, let me think. My master by chance, then being near us, or I could have, uh, you know, I had to chop off a note and it still didn't sound too comfortable. So what I did at least is I, add, I actually added a word. He then being near us, which is something at least during a performance you can get away with. And Helena, did you have moments like that as well where you had to adjust or? Well, I was actually not the first singer hired on to this project. Uh, it just so happened that I moved up to Santa Barbara 
And then Eric, who I knew from a few years back when I was a student at UCSB, messaged me saying, hey, we're looking for a singer. Can you do this? And it was four weeks until, and he said, here's your text. By the way, you're singing most of it. <laughs> <laughs> so can you give us a little bit of it that you found uh, yeah. especially challenging or interesting or fun? And, and I don't know whether we could have a little accompaniment sure. as well. Sure, let me think. Hmm. Uh, do we want to sing the dirty part? Which one? Oh, the last one. Oh, your last one? Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. So, right. So one of the things is I don't actually have a lot of formal training as a singer. So Katie helped me with some of the really quick notes that had to be like on one or two syllables. So, uh, Coral and Fats? I'll see her a little bit she's Oh, wait. No worries. Okay. So, my Coral. And Abe, anything that you want to share? I'd love to also be able um, to hear from Johan before we close. Uh, yeah, I, I sort of was the last person to join into this uh, <laughs> project very recently. And I think the challenge for me is that I normally am a, somebody who sings very low. And um, I don't know, this is parts, there's a little bit of a stretch for me just actually learning it. And now that I know it, not so bad. Okay. Yeah. Many ballads involve many, many singers. And um, so this would have been, and, and in many instances, um, one person would sing all of those parts. They just sing the whole ballad. But I, um, I can see in a group where people say, well, let you sing this part, I'll sing this part. And then it gets problematic, like you say, because everybody's voices um, have to be in a different key and then another if, if for them to reach all the notes. You guys want to share a little bit, and then we'll close. Well, I thought it was interesting um, being maybe classically trained. You're used to a lot of what's called vibrato on the instrument. Um, gives a really rich tone. But in this time period, you know, they, there was little to none. Um, the strings were probably not very well tuned either. So they had a lot of open strings. Whereas right now, I'm, I'm muting a lot of it, um, so that it's not too bright against against the loop. But um, yeah, I mean, it was a really interesting challenge trying to cut back on what's natural in our Can you give style. me an instance of a librato type line mm -hmm. and the way you play that? Yeah, play it super romantic. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you could, you could play it really, uh, let me just... Because this is a, a problem with the music that we get. Yeah. Uh, historically, we um, find these more fancy tunes, then we have to bring them down. Because you could do it really... <laughs> In, in the style of the ballad. And what you have there nice. too is the difference between the courtly, mm -hmm. what might have been pl been played in the more higher class or upper middle class homes, what are words in the music books, mm -hmm. and before they got disseminated and sort of dummy down for the masses. And, and what the common person needs. They need a, a nice, easy yeah, beat exactly. and rhythm. They can't, they can't um, easily sing to sort of the librados. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to just say that, first of all, I'm so thrilled that you all came together, but the kind of spontaneous and, and um, a little bit frantic way by which we put everything <laughs> together for this, <laughs> for this performance is um, very much in the spirit of, of, of EBBA and the way we operate. We, are, we have had singers from um, every um, faculty singers, uh, uh, graduate student, undergraduate staff have taken, cut their hours so they could then sing. Many people have been, uh, the fact that we've taken over the sciences is absolutely one of my greatest um, um, <laughs> triumphs. We have biology and chemistry here, singing a broadside ballad. Um, people in, are not as trained in music in our day and age as, as they were in the period. They weren't trained at all, they just lived it and they worked to it. They, they did everything to it. But many people 
many people have had exposure to music as they were growing up and they never used it, right? They didn't become a professional singer, a professional lute player, um, a professional violinist. But we find these people and we bring them together and that's what we do at every level of ABBA. We bring people together and it's all walks, actually, of, of life in the campus and sometimes the community as well. Well, we're so glad here at UCI to have been part of that and to, to have you here today. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.